What are God's goals? Remember I said, if we're looking at, you know, this whole thing was Joel 2 and blood moons. You know, that's a hot current issue. But actually what it's about is prophecy and the end of the world. So what the end of the world is for Christians biblical expectancy. What that means is we expect that the Lord's going to do what he said. He's going to judge the earth. He's going to right all wrongs. He's going to come and rule. He is going to make the deserts to bloom. He's going to make the water pure. There's going to be no carnivorous beasts, no poisonous creatures. He's going to fulfill all of his promises. We expect him to do all that. But what are we supposed to be doing? Buying the prepper kit? Hiding? You know, getting as far away from sin, you know, 10 miles from all known sin? No. It's, it's very interesting, and, and there are some expectations. Here's the first one. We read it. Faithfulness and assembling together and encouraging one another. This is the first. Expectancy should motivate us. If you really believe that the Lord is coming at any moment, then we should have it heavy on our mind how to stir up love and good works in other believers. So you have to be near them, and the way you're near them is not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, even though some first century people were, but exhorting one another. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be exhorters, and more and more because we're seeing the day approaching. We're hearing the sound of the hoofbeats coming. So the first motivation, what, what expectancy should motivate us to is toward that stirring up and gathering together. The second is steadfastness and kindness. What James said in that passage we read is, establish your heart, get steadfast. Go through the spiritual disciplines of having your heart fixed on the word of the Lord so you know his expectations for his return. And then be kind. Don't grumble. Don't be condemned. The judge is standing at the door. Don't be found unloving toward other believers, uh, the one another's. This is a, a, a negative one another. Be kind to one another would be the positive. Don't grumble against one another is the, the negative. Did you know when Christians are at each other, they are not able to to operate in the power of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is grieved when we grumble. and Well, that was our whole summer study when we, um, you know, are taking pot shots through gossip and, and, and anything else that, that the early church was experiencing. So we're supposed to be steadfast, get our hearts established uh, by the Lord, and be kind. So that's the second thing prophecy should do to us. Here's another one. All these are the passages that are tied to the Lord's coming. And 1 Peter 4, 7, the end of all things is at hand. You know, at hand means it's close. It's coming. Therefore, what? Be serious and watchful in your prayers. Gregoreo, that's the Greek word. Gregory is a Greek word. Gregoreo means to be looking around, being alert. Be alert in your prayers. Be serious. Be focused. Don't be weighed down with dissipation. Don't have your mind ungirded. Don't let your mind go off in every direction. The Bible says it, when it comes to evil, be like children. Have you ever noticed that you can talk, if a child is young enough, you can talk about stuff and they don't even understand it. They're not acquainted with what you're talking about. And there's a level that a child stays at where they're blissfully unaware. God says we should be quite unaware of the unfruitful works of darkness and the deeds that people do in that, rather than watching those deeds on 60-foot wide screens and, and being grieving to the Holy Spirit and quenching him, we're supposed to be serious about these things and watchful in our prayers. And therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, Peter said, what kind of people should we be in holy conduct and godliness? Prayer and holy conduct are byproducts of expectancy of Christ's return, and we should be expectant. And then 1 John says that we should have purity and Christ-likeness. When he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. And a good verse on this is 2 Corinthians 7, 1, which says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness 
uh, that, that we are supposed to purge ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the mind. We are supposed to purify ourselves as he is pure because we want to uh, see him as he is and we want to be found uh, pleasing him because we long for his coming.